Let's talk about the audio engine and your system setup in detail. First, make sure that um, in your audio setup system that you choose the right driver for your sound card. Usually you've got three choices, a DirectX driver, a multimedia driver, which is the standard Windows driver, and a driver which, which is supposed to come with your sound card, an AISO driver, I use an M-Audio Delta sound card, that's why it says Delta here, M-Audio Delta. If you use a different sound card, like a Yamaha sound card or a DSP24 sound card, then you should have a different different driver here. This is the one to choose. Choose that one. And, um, and then in theory, things should be running smoothly. You can choose what sample rate you want to use for your recordings. Um, 96 kilohertz being the best and best sample rate giving you the highest quality recordings 44.1 kilohertz is um, CD quality and anything higher than that is um, considered to be better than CD quality anything lower than 44.1 is not um, useful for for music recordings anymore nowadays unless you want to create special effects for example the only thing is if you go with higher sampling rates you end up with larger files on your hard drive and you need to keep an eye on how large the files are going to be and it also depends a little bit on how many files you need to record and whether you only need to record one or two files for example. For this um, for this video I keep it on 48 kilohertz at the moment which means I'm striking a balance between um, system performance and um, and audio quality as well. The latency on my system at the moment is 5 milliseconds I can I can reduce that if you if I go to kilohertz. and you've heard what happens when I change the kilohertz in the middle of a video recording. So I'll go back to 48 kilohertz and um, and leave things as they are for now. Saying that I've switched it to 96 kilohertz just to demonstrate to you that the latency can go down to three milliseconds. And if I click on the ASIO control panel and choose um, um, a smaller buffer size for my samples, I choose 64, click done, then the um, latency should be a lot smaller as well, but it might not be doing at the moment since, um, since the sound card is in use, so I probably have to stop the recordings, do the settings and then do the same trick again and see what the effect is. Now this is exactly what I've done. And you can see that my latency has come down to 1 milliseconds on 96 kilohertz. And just to show you what happens if you choose a different driver, I've chosen the SIO um, multimedia driver now. And the latency has gone up all the way to 894 milliseconds, which is a lot, 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 lot higher than, than the milliseconds that I had before. These milliseconds here are, are not, very, um, not very useful, basically. So I'll go back to my original settings for good. Here we are, we're back again. I've chosen the M-Audio Delta ASIO driver. My latency is back to 5 milliseconds and the sampling rate is, is 48 kilohertz. Um, this is the first area you need to check out when you look at your VST setup. And the next area is important for you if you want to listen to yourself while you're recording. So um, this is the monitoring section, but we'll talk through these bits later on when we um, start to record things and start to monitor ourselves. So I'll close this one. And if you want to keep these changes for all the songs that you're working on, you could untick this one and then close it. So it will go into your general Cubase preferences. Or if you just want to keep these settings for um, this particular song, then um, tick the box down here and close it as it is. In order to make things a little bit easier for you to see, where certain elements are placed in the in the recording chain, I've developed this little diagram to show you um, all the different elements, basically. So we'll start with the musician. That's you or me or anybody, somebody you might invite and so on. And the musician plays directly into the sound card. This is done just by a standard, standard cable going into the line in setting on the sound card. Um, and depending on what sound card you've got, you either have um, Sony Money line ins or or just one line in, or stereo input, line in, a microphone input. Um, it really depends. But then from the sound card, 
it goes down into the VST inputs section within Cubase. You find them by going into panels and choosing VST inputs. Here they are. This is the little window. So I use a Delta sound card, a Delta 66 sound card. I've got one, two, three, four analog inputs and one SPDIF input pair. I can switch all of these inputs on. And down here, you've got uh, a little label which you can change according to how you've um, how you've connected your sound card, for example. My second voice is in um, input one. So I'll change this one to talk. I sometimes have a bass guitar in the second input. Um, my guitar is here. So this is the guitar left input because I'm using a preamp with a digital output. And this is my guitar right input. And here I use an effects unit which, I, um, which I've which i hooked up to the sound card. Let's call this one external effect unit, effects unit, left, and um, this one is for the right output or right input. And this is um, these are the out these are the um, connections on the sound card, and this is what Cubase makes out of these connections. If I close this window now, and open the inspector, and select an audio track, I can now choose where from I want to record. I can either record my my talking voice, maybe the bass guitar, the external effects unit, either the left side or the right channel of the unit, or the um, left and or right channel from my um, um, digital preamp. And before going on to the next step, let's have a look at the sound card to see what those inputs look like on the sound card. These are my hardware ins, hardware in SPDIF, hardware in 1.2. I'm going into um, my input number one at the moment, and this is my voice coming through, and I've routed it to go into the middle. If I set this one to the left channel, you can see that you can only hear it, or you can see it there, you can hear it on the left side. And obviously on the right side, the um, music comes onto the other side. Here it's on the right now, and that's on the left. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to hear it since the video is going to be in mono. This is back in the middle again, or more or less the middle. Minus 4% there. And, um, and this is my hardware input 3.4. The guitar goes into the SPDIF input. This is my guitar. And then my preamp also goes into an effects unit, which goes straight into hardware um, in 3.4. And this is the effect that you can hear. So if I um, mute the effect input, this is my guitar sound pure. And um, if I mute the guitar input, you can hear the ring modulation there. We've talked about the VST inputs. Now the signal goes into the channel mixer, where we can choose the recording source and also check the levels by pressing the little in button. The channel mixer is just here in panels. VST channel mixer. You can open this one up a little bit. And at the moment we've got the talk input and the bass input. Talk, bass, talk, bass. But I can um, choose a different one here. External effect left, external effect right. Guitar left and guitar right. I can click on the in buttons and monitor each input separately. So this is my talk input. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit too quiet. Whenever you press the red light here, the faders um, reset. Um, and as soon as you, as soon as I talk again, it goes up and it uh, measures the um, maximum volume. Let's see, um, my guitar. <laughs> got the clean guitar input and the one with the effects. They're all playing at the same time now. And, um, and if I want to record, I just need to choose the one I want to um, record from, basically. 
Those levels are okay for now. They're a little bit low. And to adjust those levels, you need to increase the volume on the hardware. Minus five, minus six. It's a typical value, but then you you always have to make sure that when you play with a bit more oomph, it doesn't go into the red bit. Which it doesn't. So it's okay. And then quickly let's check the bass. The bass is here. The bass is a bit too quiet as well. Again, I need to adjust that one directly um, on the bass or on the bass preamp. So I'll increase the gain for the bass. And um, this might be a bit too loud, as you can see. So I'll take it down a little bit again. Reset the fader or the um, level meter. Obviously, it depends on on what you um, what you're going to record and everything. At the moment, the channels down here don't mean a thing. You could uh, monitor the bass on, on any input you like, or on any of these channel strips you like, and if I play the bass guitar, you can see the bass coming in. On all of them at the same time. Compare the this top button with the top button here in the inspector. This track is selected, and if I now change this one down to bass, bass comes up here as well. And if I go down for these effects, it comes up there. And 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 it's basically a mirror image of of that button, of that button there. This is basically your recording source or your input source, which you need to choose before you actually make the recording in order to specify what you want to record on a specific track. You could have, let's say you've got track 2 set up, you can record on the same source, track 3 could record from the same source, and um, or you could change it as well later on. It doesn't really doesn't matter. The only thing is that while you're doing the recording, or just before the recording, you need to choose and then do the recording. And for the next recording, you could choose something else again. Let's go for a little adventure and record a few tracks at the same time. I'm going to Options, go into Multi-Record, switch on Multi-Record, the little R column comes up, and then to record on different tracks at the same time you need to activate those tracks by clicking on the um, R column here. But I need to set up the tracks as well first, so I'll give each track a different name, and then I'll talk you through the setting up of the inputs and everything. I have set up the tracks, starting with the talk one, which is my, my sort of talking voice, the bass, the effects left right, the guitar left right. Um, these are in order now, but I've got a feeling that um, that I shouldn't really put them in order, just to show you that it doesn't it's not necessary to put them in any order. So I'll change the order of these and um, and then take you take it from there. So the order of tracks of changed now, it's changed. Now I need to check that I'm recording on the right inputs. FX left, I want to record external effects left, FX right, I want to record from FX right, guitar left, I want to record my left guitar signal, my right guitar signal, bass shall be the bass, and talk shall be talk. Now I can switch all of these on, 